Does science disprove God? A lot of people today believe that that's actually true. They believe that science actually disproves all the truth claims against God and against Christianity. But that just isn't true. Today I'm going to explain why. Right here, right now. Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Dan Beasley and this channel is all about inspiring intentional discipleship. Throughout the week I release different videos on different topics to help you to become a more intentional disciple of Christ. So subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to receive all notifications of the videos that I send out to you each day. So we live in a time where a lot of people to say without any truth claims that science disproves Christianity and it disproves God. A few Months ago, I sat in a cafe with my nephew who said exactly that to me. Oh, Christianity isn't true because science can disprove that it is. And it can't. And it can't for many reasons. And as Christians, we need to push back on people who say this because their claims are unsubstantiated. They're not really sure what they're talking about. But if we study uh, about science and Christianity, if we get some facts, uh, we can push back on them and start putting the, um, the argument back to them about why exactly can and how does science disprove the claims of God in Christianity? Today I'm going to speak to you about a few things that we can do and why. So first of all, let's look at just one simple thing. The evidence that there is a creator behind a creator universe is overwhelming. You can't get something from nothing. You can't just uh, say that the universe is here and everything that we see uh, and all that stuff in the universe that we can't even see and discovered yet is here just by potluck and it came out of nothing. That is just ridiculous. Something has to be created. Someone created this shirt. It was designed, it was made, it was packaged, it was shipped over here. It didn't just appear on my body and I said, well, you know, that's, that's fine. I kind of like the colors and if it's here and it's just random, I'm going to just go with it. It's something that I chose and it's something that I knew was created by somebody because it just doesn't appear. Um, so people who say, uh, especially atheists that we're here by random chance, well, you can't get something from nothing. It just doesn't work that way. If something is created, there has to be a creator. And the pushback is, so if we're here, uh, this wasn't created there. So why is there such order in the universe? Why is there uh, mathematics in the universe? That seems logical and ordered. In something that is randomly here, there's too much order. And that's fact. And, and, and even um, atheist scientists will say there is order in the universe. You see, because good science follows the facts. In science, a question is posed and then a, a test or a experiment are done to understand and try and answer that question. And it's only facts that come back. When we start getting in the realm of uh, subjectivity about what the scientist kind of thinks or believes or putting on to the, the answers and the facts and the evidence, um, what they think and trying to override them because maybe it didn't go their way or what Ever. then it's changing uh, what science is. Science is pretty much a fact-based exercise. Here's a question or a hypothesis. I'm going to answer it this way using these tests um, and I'm going to look at the factual answers of what comes up and then I have to interpret that. And the interpretation might be a bit difficult or understanding but there's the subjectivity that can kind of come on. Um, is, is what most scientists don't do. What most people do in speaking about that is put a lot of subjectivity on. Well, science disproves God. How can science disprove God? Science is looking about how and what. How does this work? What, what does it do? When did this happen? You know, questions like that. It doesn't look at, about who. It doesn't say that... Um, there was a creator behind the universe, for example. It looks at how did it happen? When did it happen? What was happening? It's answering those questions, not who. So if you took a book, it would say, how is this book created? Uh, what was happening in that creation? When was it created? But not who wrote it. It's not looking at that. It's looking at 
other things about it. So when we're discussing science with people and, and Christianity, we've got to remember it's really based around facts and it's only the facts that they should be stating and what those facts are asking and answering. They will only ask about logical things, what, when, why, not about who. So this is another area that we, um, when science says it disproves God, science isn't disproving there is a God, it's looking at, and this is the most amazing things, and this is why a lot of medieval scientists were Christians who were interested in science, they wanted to know through their interest how God did things. Science basically for us as Christians is looking at how God did things and understanding the majesty and the wonder of how he created the whole of the universe and all there is in it. That's what science is doing. It's looking at God's creation and going, wow. And a lot of scientists who start out uh, not believing in God become um, Christians through uh, looking at this amazing creation and the chances of this creation actually happening. Let's, let's take an example. So here's a really good example of science being factual and answering questions and then put in a real simple way for people to understand uh, and for Christians to use pushback. This is taken from a book called Tricky, uh, written by a guy I went to theological college with, aimed at teenagers but uh, really good for everybody. Um, and it says in this book uh, that a scientist to put it this way, for uh, us being here and the kind of beginnings of the universe. And the chances of that happening are a million to one event happening 15 times. Uh, so to compare that, to put that into a, a, a way to understand, that's taking this 5p coin, painting this 5p coin black, so you can see how small it is, um, then covering the whole of the earth with other 5p coins, not painted black, and then taking a needle, uh, hopefully you can see that, um, up into space and throwing this needle down to earth and actually hitting the black painted coin is more likely to happen than um, the universe just coming into existence by itself. So do you get that? An event there's a million to one chance happening 15 times in a row, which is equivalent to me painting this black, covering the whole earth with other ones not painted black, going up into space and throwing this bin down and hitting that one exactly. If I did that, that would be more likely to happen than the universe coming into being by itself. When people say science disproves God, it's kind of pushing back. That isn't proving that God is Jesus or anything. That's proving that there is something behind the whole of the creation of the universe. You know, another classic one that people love to quote is Darwin's theory of evolution. But Darwin's theory of evolution, and even a lot of Christians will uh, subscribe to that or kind of uh, an adaptive version of evolution. Darwin's theory doesn't answer everything. It doesn't answer the the origins of the universe. It doesn't answer the origins of um, the first um thing to come out the water. It doesn't answer uh, what DNA is. There's a lot that Darwin's theory speaks about, but it doesn't answer fundamental questions. And when people throw out, oh, but Darwin's theory, evolution, yes, it speaks about uh, evolution and those things, but it doesn't answer the fundamental questions of, okay, it's answering this, but what about the beginning of the universe? What about those first things that cooled out of that, that swamp. What about DNA uh, and the life-giving DNA of I each person and, and why it's so unique? It's not answering those questions. So it'll answer something, but not all. And it can't be used as a kind of an answer to say, well, Darwin's theory of evolution, I win. Push back, push back and ask um, them what they mean. Deconstruct their answer and, and see what basis and premise they're coming from uh, and don't feel that you are on the defensive uh, all the time. You can ask them if they're going on to you and they're kind of attacking you, attack what they're saying. Do not ever be rude to the person, do not uh, get angry, just attack their premise, attack what they're saying and see the holes in it. If you're 
If you've done your study, if you know your stuff, you will be able to defend your faith in your answers very well and very wisely. And here's another thing I, I mentioned before about a lot of scientists, uh, Newton, Galileo, a, a lot of medieval scientists were Christians. I don't think there's one out there that became uh, a scientist and then said, I'm now an atheist. I've, I've looked at all these things. I, I realise that there isn't God and I've become an atheist. In fact, science uh, sustained and helped their faith. It helped them grow in faith because they were understanding and seeing what God was doing at a level that most other people couldn't. And they were probably amazed and stunned at it. Science didn't disprove to them that there was a God, that uh, God wasn't real. Science uh, was in uh, their life all the way through. They were still scientists, they believed in science, but they also believed in God and they were uh, Christians until their death. They went to their death as a Christian. Science didn't make them realise that God wasn't real. It, it didn't change their faith it probably deepened it more than anything so all these people will say ah oh, but science disproved god why were the scientists why are scientists still christian why are cosmologists uh, coming to faith um when they're looking at the universe and how amazing it is and seeing it's just there's got to be something behind it why are they coming to faith if science disproves uh, God and science disproves Christianity. And here's the last thing, and I, and I love this, and this is from a friend uh, who was having a drink the other night, uh, and he said to me as a teenager, and it was a really genuine question, um, he said to his scientists, um, look at this photo, it's a, a really famous photo of evolution, and he said, um, why when we get to man, to his uh, biology teacher, that is standing up there, and we develop from the, the apes, chimpanzees, do we lose hair? Why do they have hair? And then suddenly you get to man who loses his hair. And I thought, this is such a genius question. It's an amazing question. And he asked it genuinely. He just really wanted to know. And then when you apply what we know, you apply the logic. We came out of Africa. And yet as chimpanzees or apes or whatever it says we came from, uh, in Africa we had hair as, as we move into colder climates into Europe, uh, we lose the hair. It's a brilliant question. It's, it's, it's totally illogical because as evolution states, it's a, a moving process. But why would you go to a colder climate and lose hair? I, I think there's a, just a brilliant question. It's a, a genuine question. And I would, and I know he would, because he's waited many years for uh, a, a, an answer, uh, someone to answer that. So if you're watching this and you know why in that kind of evolutionary model, um, they have hair and they lose hair and yet we know as they're becoming uh, more advanced they're moving to colder climates why do we lose their hair if you could answer that that would be absolutely brilliant and that and that's genuine as well i'm open to that and it'd be great to have an answer so thanks for watching what's your answer to this question of science's disproved christianity or god and um, how do you answer people when they're coming to you and and and, and going on about um your faith being untrue how do you respond to these people put your answers uh, in the comments below so we can kind of build up um, different ways to answer this question when people are saying to us so i've only looked at a, a very tiny section there's so much more so please contribute and help us as a community and i will see you next time like the video to get it out there to more people bye Heavenly Father, we thank you for science. We thank you that we can know you better and know how you worked this amazing creation into being and that we can just witness a tiny glimpse of that and how awesome and powerful you are. We pray today for all those Christian scientists out there in a world that is against them and in a world in which they work, which is so hard for them especially to profess their faith. May they always continually look to you and to share the good news that they know with others around them. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.